What is going on, everybody? How are you guys doing today? I am your boy, Christian Israel, and you are tuned into the New Creation Capital Podcast. This is a place where we discuss what happens in the world today, the stock market, and yes, digital assets. This is the one-stop shop for you to get everything that you need in your day for your Christ and crypto. Because as I love to say, Jesus makes you a new you by giving you a new future because in him you are a new creation, guys. Welcome to episode 186. Yes, it is September 14th, Monday, and you are here. You have made it to Monday. I hope you guys have had a wonderful weekend. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about the fact that the coronavirus will, is going to ruin a lot of people's credit scores. And we're going to go through the why here. And I, it's, this is a little bit different. I got a bunch of articles we're going to go through. But we're going to talk about your credit score and what is going on and what's going on with the banks and the credit reset. That's what we're going to discuss. Of course, you guys know by now that if you want to support this channel, as you can see to the right, I have a book that is out. It is called Learning to Love in the Wilderness. Um, I just published it. It is not about crypto. It is all about Jesus. And if you guys are interested, I would love to have you guys on board and just help out. Help out. You can purchase the book in the description below. It is $14.99 and that is it. That is it. So if you're interested in knowing about my journey, a 40-day journey discovery in learning to love myself by accepting the love of Jesus, please go ahead and click on the link in the description and purchase the book. You would be helping the channel out because you guys know this is not a monetized channel. So anything you guys can do will be an awesome, awesome help. I truly appreciate it. If this is your first time to the channel, please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell at the top right. Comment. You know I love the amens. I know a lot of people have been sending me screenshots of those who have purchased the book. If you have purchased the book, please let me know below. If you're interested, please let me know as well. Anything you can do to help out, I will appreciate. And it's a good gift for somebody who's also trying to learn a little bit more about Jesus and how he changes our lives from the inside out. So enough of that. Let's go ahead and move on into today's story. So like I said to you guys, we're going to talk about the fact that the coronavirus will ruin your credit score and the fact that big banks, with the assistance from Senator Pat Toomey, want to keep it that way. Let's jump in here. Life is great during the pandemic if you're a big bank. A la JP Morgan Chase, the nation's largest bank, announced record trading revenue earlier this month. This was in July. And while preparations are being made for future loan losses, most of these giants, as you can see here, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, and Citigroup increased profits over the last year. Ex everybody except Wells Fargo, as you see here, they took a tumble. In addition, regulators have consistently rolled back the rules put in after the last financial crisis using the excuse of COVID-19. In the most recent development, banks may not banks may not have to hold as much capital to absorb losses. If Senate Republicans place a repeal of the Dodd-Frank Act leveraging requirement in the coronavirus relief package. Let me go ahead and collapse this so you guys can see that. But all of this isn't enough for the financial industry. They've also been hard at work making sure the ordinary Americans struggling with the economic collapse suffer for years to come. Specifically, bank interests have sought to block a measure that would temporarily ban negative items from appearing on the credit reports for the duration of the pandemic. And one of their biggest champions and financial beneficiaries is in Congress is Senator Pat Toomey. This guy, he's a Republican from Pennsylvania, has made sure the request will be honored. He says here, you might think that the big three credit reporting bureaus, TransUsion, Experian, and Equifax would prominently feature in any corporate pushback to legislative activity on this topic, but that's not how credit reporting battles go in Washington. The credit bureaus themselves don't drive the train they ride on, says Ed I'm going to try to say his name right. Ed Merwitzki of the Public Interest Interest Research Group. The banks drive that train. 
It is important to understand why consumer advocates believe that barring negative credit reporting ne is necessary right now before explaining why Toomey and the banks are so desperate to stop them. When the consumer fails to make rent or a, a utility bill or loan payment, a negative credit item is sent to the credit reporting bureau and factored into credit score that determines people's ability to secure a loan or a mortgage, find an apartment to rent, or even get a job. Negative credit items stay on reports for seven years. That's a long time. These types of defaults have to have to be seen in the context of the current crisis, advocates say. Consumers that lose their jobs or are economically devastated from COVID, their inability to pay bills isn't meaningful at a time like this, says Chi Chi Wu, an attorney at the National Consumer Law Center, pictured here. Nothing going on is a ref good reflection of the credit worthiness of borrowers, but because of the seven-year term for negative credit items, the hit would stay with them until 2027, harming their ability to move through financial life because of something completely out of their control. Advocates try to get the moratorium on negative credit reporting placed into the CARES Act in March. They tried. Instead, they got a more limited provision. If a consumer manages to get an accommodation from their lender to miss payments, known as forbearance, then they miss the payment, then the missed payment won't be reported. This requires this requires a borrower to seek forbearance every one of their from every one of their lenders, despite difficulties in getting through to call centers. You guys know if you call a call center, it's pretty crazy to get in. It requires the lenders to agree to it. And it requires the call center employee of the lender to remember to properly code the forbearance as an accommodation that doesn't trigger a negative credit item. You have to make an inquiry to the bank. You have to say pandemic in the conversation. And you have to hope that the frazzled essential worker fills in the code correctly, Marowinski says. He says it is a mess. Why the Rube, why this Rube Goldberg procedure adopted instead of just halting negative credit items? A little notice statement from Senator Sharon Brown says here, she's a Democrat from Ohio, ranking member of the Senate Banking Committee, provides some of the answer. Speaking at the Consumer Federation of America's Virtual Consumer Assembly, you see here on May 6th, Brown discussed the negotiations on getting the provision into the CARES Act. We thought we had it. We thought we were very close. And then Senator Majority, Majority Leader, Leader Mitch McConnell stripped it out on the behalf of the junior senator of Pennsylvania, he said. That refers to Toomey, as you see pictured here again, that he's referring to Toomey. An executive at two different banks before entering into politics. Toomey, a senior member of the Senate Banking Committee who would be in line to become the chair if the Republican retained the Senate in November elections, has long been a major recipient of banking industry cash. According to the center responsive, that's Pat Toomey right here, as you can see here. According to the Center for Responsive Politics, Toomey has received... Let's see here. Toomey has received over $2 million from members of the securities and investment industries from 2015 up to 2020. Among the biggest donors are Goldman Sachs and PNC, the Pennsylvania-based large regional bank. In short, if companies like PNC want to keep negative credit reports coming, they would work through someone like Pat Toomey. Quote, banking interests have sought to block a measure that would temporarily ban negative items from appearing on credit reports for the duration of the pandemic. Consumer reports were successful in inserting a ban on negative credit reports into the House. Democrats followed up coronavirus response bill, the HEROES Act in May, but it does not impel in the HEALS Act, the Senate Republican followed up engineered by McConnell. Negotiations are underway to reconcile those two bills. Senator Toomey's office did not respond to the request for comment Senator Brown has introduced legislation, as you can see right here, to put a moratorium on a negative credit items, said in a statement, quote, Americans shouldn't have to worry about their credit scores as they would as they work to make ends meet. 
Congress must include protections for consumers like protecting their credit scores, end quote. Why would banks care so much about credit scores, especially when negative credit items accumulated during a pandemic don't provide an accurate picture about creditworthiness? Quote, the consumer community believes strongly that the inaccurate information is provided to no is preferred to no information, says Marowinski. Quote, they would rather mix up with a deadbeat than mix you up with a good credit risk. End quote. One key element of this is the interest rates and other pricing details for loans and credit cards are based on credit scores. If negative credit information is supplied, it allows bank and lenders to raise fees and rate on customers. Quote, they want to make loans, but they would rather make them at higher prices and charge more people, Marowinski says. End quote. Banks are already complaining. Banks are already complaining that they cannot Banks are already complaining that they cannot discern credit risk during the pandemic issue because of relative modest credit scores protections in the CARES Act. Wu chalked it up to, quote, credit dogmatism, end quote, says that, quote, the threat is there if there's a moratorium that won't lend or will only lend to people with the 800 credit score. It's the same argument as Dodd-Frank. If you regulate U.S., that will choke off the supply of credit, end quote. The form of blackmail, this form of blackmail, forcing borrowers to suffer for years for the sake of bank profits only adds to the notion that there's something very broken about the entire credit reporting system. Since March, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau Consumer Complaint Database has seen 109, 109, 109 percent. Can you believe that? 109 percent year over increase year-over-year -year increase in complaints about incorrect information on credit reports. This is endemic to the credit reporting system where lives are ruined based on erroneous records and private companies snatch and profit from the personal information and sometimes they also let hackers benefit from it too. The ultimate solution here would be go would be a public credit registry cutting private entities out of the equation and lessening the influence of bank creditors. The Biden campaign, which you know I hate to say this, but it is true, the Biden campaign has surprisingly embraced this concept, including, ah, uh, this, this part really annoys me, but it is what it is, including the racial equality agenda, which is fitting as shoddy credit reporting particularly exacerbates racial disparities. In, a current, in the current moment, the, the public credit registry would make it easier to suspend negative reports during a moment of economic crisis. It would be built into law, says Amy Trom of the Demos. The architect of the public credit registry. I think it's better on a blockchain, but we'll continue. If there's a local crisis like a hurricane or a national recession, you require that credit reports are handed differently. In the hands of a private company, they don't have an interest in doing that. And banks, along with senators like Pat Toomey, which we see again pictured here, and we also see pictured here, apparently have even less an interest of protecting the public from stain that will tangibly impact them for years through no fault of their own. To say that people post-crisis as they try to rebuild their lives have to carry the impact of this, says Trump. It's just another round of disadvantage and discrimination. Do you believe it's discrimination? Do you believe, guys? Now I gotta ask you, do you believe that this is all an issue? Do you believe here that the fact that the credit reporters are doing their thing and still trying to take advantage of COVID is their fault? Or do you believe people should have had money saved enough in order to pay their bills? Personally, if I sit back, I think you should have had enough money in savings. A lot of people in this country are living paycheck to paycheck, and I think a lot of it is by choice, maybe some not by choice, but my first question is, how much does your phone cost you? Do you need the tablet? What kind of car do you drive? Are you living over your means? These are financially responsible questions. Because now we know, guys, that money is not always going to be there. But there is a light at the end of the tunnel. There is a chance. There is a chance for you right now 
to make some of the biggest investments possible. If you come into the crypto space, you can do life-changing wealth right now. And that's what we do at New Creation Capital Podcast, at New Creation Capital. We try to help you knock that stuff out. If I just do a quick little show you the website, this is what we do. For a free consultation, hit us up. You can email our, our, our managing partner, Kat, K-A-T, at newcreationcapital.com. Shoot her email or give a call, 512-710-9580. We are trying to help you get in the right place. Our space is the digital asset space. That's what we focus on. We focus on that for people who are living paycheck to paycheck, how to get out of that. I've done it personally myself, going from broke to where I am now. Of course, with the Lord, Jesus Christ has helped me with all this, and my goal is to help you guys with this. So come and contact our team. We can help you because this is, if this space did not let you know that you cannot rely on the U.S. dollar or your job, you need to learn how to invest and learn how to do it the right way, and that's where we help you. But that's enough. What do you think? Do you feel that the coronavirus is killing your credit score? Do you think it's helping you or hurting you, or do you think it's hurting people all across the board? Also, guys, don't forget, if you want to help out with the channel and you're in a place where you can help support the channel, please give a chance and purchase my book, Learning to Love in the Wilderness, The 40-Day Journey of Discovery and Learning to Love Myself by Accepting the Love of Jesus. It's just a nice story. It's not fluffy. It's raw. It's ugly. But it's truth. So if you want to learn some truth about my walk with Jesus, this is where you can go. In the meantime, guys, I think that is enough of your crypto. Let me give you your Christ. And it is a pretty nice verse here that I'm going to give you. I'm going to open up to Romans, and it's going to be Romans 5, chapter Romans chapter 5, verse 1. And it goes like this. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into grace in which we stand and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that sufferings produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, but because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has given to us. For while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person. Though perhaps a good person, one would dare to even die. But God shows his love for us in that. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for you and me. I know you guys see it. Let me ask you this one question. For all of you cynics out there, what would you do if you found out at the last second Jesus Christ is truly the Son of God and He was the only way to save you, would you still ignore it? Or would you go and burn in hell? Simple question. Would you rather have free salvation or would you rather suffer? It's pretty much what you're looking at. So with that said, guys, let me know in the comments below. You know I love the amens. Please make sure you give this channel a like and subscribe. Comment below. Please subscribe to the channel as well. And if you're interested in purchasing the book, that would be awesome. I'd really, really appreciate it. This is the end of episode 186. I am your boy, Christian Israel, and you are tuned into the New Creation Capital Podcast. This is a place where we discuss what happens in the world today, the stock market, and yes, digital assets. This is the one-stop shop for you to get everything that you need in your day for your Christ and crypto. Because as I love to say, Jesus makes you a new you by giving you a new future because in him, you are a new creation, guys. Please remember, God loves you. I love you. You are loved. Until next time, guys, peace and love. God bless you all. Later, guys. You lose your phone, you hit a button, it starts beeping. I don't know how a hundred billion dollars in a Wall Street product just goes missing. Maybe we need to find my CLO thing. Now is the historical moment, the time, not only to fight severe virus, but to shape the system.
we have a unique but rapidly shrinking window of opportunity to learn lessons and reset ourselves on a more sustainable path. It is an opportunity we have never had before and may never have again. So we must use all the levers we have at our disposal, knowing that each and every one of us has a vital role to play. Now is the time to think what history would say about this crisis. And now is the time for all of us to define our own role. What is it that would make it so that history would look at this crisis as the great opportunity for reset? The Great Reset is a welcome recognition that this human tragedy must be a wake-up call. It is imperative that we reimagine, rebuild, redesign, reinvigorate and rebalance our world. Bank branches and ATMs will start disappearing across the country as the pandemic shifts Australians further towards a cashless economy. The use of cash has more than halved as many retailers switch to cards and phone payments, transforming the way we use money.